We are approaching 1 million subscribers on our YouTube channel. Can't believe we're even close to this. Can't thank you guys enough. If you haven't already, please go hit that subscribe button. Lots of fun NBA content coming your way. Before you came to OKC for the pre-draft workout, did you know what Mark Dagnall looked like? No, I, <laughs> I had no idea. So, like, and we're like working out and like, he's like chirping at me during there and I'm like going through the ones and I'm scoring and, and I'm talking shit to Mark and we end up like kind of button heads, but like talking back and forth the whole workout. And then I think like, like you have the meetings afterwards, he walks in and like introduces himself. And <laughs> You're like, oh, that's the head coach. Yeah, see, oh, this is the head coach. I text that agent. I'm like, yeah, I might be cooked here. <laughs> Wait, what were you chirping with him during the workout? Yeah, he was like, uh, Mark likes to like, now that I'm like with him every day, like he likes to like try and get under your skin and like push you. So he was doing that. And I'm like quiet, especially like during like the draft. I was just right. You want to be respectful. You make a good yeah, impression. Yeah. So I'm really quiet, not really saying anything. And then he's like, I'm, I'm doing really well on the one-on-one and like our three-on-three. So he starts like yelling out stuff that he watched me do in college. And he was like, oh, well, don't let him do that. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm doing the opposite of whatever he's saying. And now I'm like in kind of like go mode. So I'm talking trash to him the whole rest of the practice. And then he walked in during that meeting and I was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I have a confession to make, actually. First of all, I just want to say this. Mark, I'm an outside observer on this. And I think Mark is one of the best coaches in the NBA. And I really mean that. And as a, as a broadcaster now, my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the job, besides documenting the NBA and getting to call games, of course, is the 10 to 15 minutes we get to spend with the head coaches pregame. We get a little interview time in the green room or sometimes, you know, Doc Rivers used to make us go into his office, but most coaches come to the green room. Um, and last year when I called uh, one of your games, I just like came away so impressed. There's, there's like three or four coaches that I've talked to that I've come away like, wow, that guy, like he's got it. He understands it, you know? And I do remember when he was named head coach that there was a puzzling, like, who is that? <laughs> I remember thinking that. Yeah. And I had no idea what he looked like until we played him. <laughs> like yeah. that's how it's pretty weird. It's weird too. Cause like he, I don't think, I don't know if Mark's ever played, but like, it's like, he really like understands like basketball. And then like, most importantly, he understands our team. So it's weird to have a coach that I don't know if I like, really played, but like he understands like kind of what we're going through, like what we're feeling. So like he's really relatable. But yeah, I had no idea who that was. That was the big takeaway, though, was, you know, we got into some like X's and O's stuff. I remember him talking about how, you know, Shay, when Shay's on the floor and you guys need a bucket because Shay didn't play that night. He was banged up. It was second night of a back to back. I think you guys were in Utah the night before. And he's like, when we need a bucket, you know. Shea's so good at getting the foul line. So if another team's going on a run, we'll just call Stops a play it. so that Shea can get to the free throw line. It's like stuff like that, little stuff that yeah. I'm like, okay, he gets it. But the other takeaway was the interpersonal stuff, which I think for coaches in the NBA is so paramount. Yeah. And it felt like at the time when in talking to him that he just understood guys. I remember him talking about Kenrich in specific, because I, I was Kenrich's teammate. And I just remember thinking like, this guy understands how to connect with players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we're young too. So it's like, it's almost like unheard of to be that like cool with us. Like I have no problem going to Mark and like talking about whatever. Um, yeah, but he gets along with the whole team really well. And uh, I think everybody's really, and it helps too, because everybody's really comfortable and that's like an organization, but yeah, Mark, Mark is really good at kind of connecting. I think he knows what makes everybody kind of go. And, you know, like we were talking about the pre-draft, like I think he kind of knows how to like get under people's skin and kind of get the best from us too. Yeah. I, I coach my oldest um, and we start every practice with uh, like the skill development piece. And then we do some teaching, run some drills pertaining to like our offense and defense. And then we scrimmage at the end. And I've been teaching them the low gather mm -hmm. and, try, you know, trying to draw fouls. Like, okay, everything's they're all right-handed except for one kid. So like every play yeah, we run is so yeah. they can get to the right hand. Mm -hmm. So we're working on like the low gather when, when the help defender comes to a finish or low gather to a floater or whatever. And my son did it the other day and uh, they called a travel. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that was a gather step. That was a gather step. And the ref's like, bro, this isn't the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> you can't gather in like nine-year-old basketball. You can't gather oh, during nine. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, he's nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> but I did see the video afterwards, and it was it, in the NBA and FIBA. It was a clean. It was a. It was clean play. It was but not clean for play. nine year olds. Yeah. What is it like having a seven foot two wingspan? <laughs> um, you know, I have negative. I have a negative wingspan. Yeah, one of those shoot. guys. Isn't that those how shooter, guys? Shooters go like that. Like Tyler uh, Hero. Baby. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of shooters have the negative. Um, I don't know. Uh, when I was shorter, because I had a growth spurt, yeah. so I was five ten, six eleven wingspan. Yeah. And that's tracked. Anybody can go uh, search that up. So you grew into your arms, essentially. Yeah. And then my <laughs> arms grew a little bit more. But I don't know. Now it's not as awkward. Like I'm into my body. No, I know. Now, yeah. But yeah. Before obviously. it was so awkward. Like everything upper body was slow. Are you cognizant of it though? Yeah. You are cognizant of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was always cognizant of not having a long wingspan and the things I had to like, even like defensively. If I, I can stay in front of a guy, but if I get bumped just a little bit, you don't have I don't to, get the contest yeah. that a normal guy would get. Right. And I, I feel like sometimes like if somebody's quicker than me, there is that gap where I don't think people, cause I'm really like, I'm like six, five, six, six, you know, somewhere around there. So I kind of back up and I feel like, I feel like a lot of guards or whoever I'm guarding think it's more space than what it is until I kind of contest or I know I can reach around screens a little bit and do that. So I figured out like my arms, especially defensively. You, you mentioned the growth spurt. Um, how, how much were you recruited in high school? Very little, like, very little, like very little. Hoff, I read Hofstra, Nevada. You Hofstra. Hofstra. Oh, was that my first one? I think my first one was Nevada. I don't really count it. Um, sorry, Nevada. Yeah. I, they, said, they, I said Nevada. Oh, how do you say it? I don't know. It's either or, right? I think it's fine. I think okay. it's fine. Yeah, well, they didn't they didn't actually mess with me, so care less how I say it. Um, they like give did me one of those offers and then never talked to me again, so I don't really count that one. Okay. But Hofstra sent me one and uh UCSB in Santa Clara. And that was it. And it was just them three. Did you did you think you could play in the NBA back then? Yeah. You did? Yeah. What made you confident that you could play in the NBA? I thought I had like all the skills to do it and I was just short. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> So there are shorter people in the NBA than me. So are your parents tall? Did you, my dad, like you six, knew seven. you would, you knew you would grow. Yeah. My dad's, well, it was just it was getting, touch and go. Yeah. <laughs> college. <laughs> and I'm still like six, two and a half. I'm like, it's, it's very touchy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I grew that summer. Okay. But my mom's five ten, dad's six, seven. And then so my brother had, stole yeah. all the height. He's six, eight. Yeah. 